Hello everyone, it's Chris and welcome to this tutorial on in-system programming ISP. In this video, we will be discussing what ISP is and how it works, as well as the benefits of using ISP, the hardware and software needed to perform this programming technique. So let's get started. First, let's start with a brief explanation of ISP. In-system programming is a technique used in electronics to program microcontrollers or other embedded devices without requiring the removal of the chip from the circuit board. This is a very convenient and cost-effective way to program chips and update firmware or software. One of the biggest benefits of using ISP is that it can greatly reduce development time and lower the cost as you will not need extra electronics component to upload your code to the MCU. Here is an example of a circuit board equipped by a USB to TTL converter for programming and its related electronics network plus the USB connector. All these parts occupy some space of the PCB and by getting rid of them, you will reduce the board size which will save you money. Some microcontrollers support ISP via a standard communication protocol such as SPI or I2C, while others use some specific protocols. The most commonly used protocol for ISP programming for AVRs is the SPI protocol, where you need 4 pins of your microcontroller plus the 2 pins for power and share the ground. To perform ISP, you will need the right hardware and software. This includes a programmer device, which is used to communicate with a microcontroller, as well as a software that is compatible with both the programmer and the microcontroller. Considering the social media chair the projects, this USB ISP programmer is the most popular for AVRs. And by connecting it to the microcontroller SPI pins, you can easily upload codes. If you are willing to use this programmer, then you need to consider this on your PCB design by providing access to the microcontroller SPI pins and make this access exposed somehow. And this technique is the most suitable to keep a small programming area in the PCB layout. By placing these surface pads arranged in 2x3 array of 2.54mm spacing, you could access the SPI port using some pogo pins. This technique requires an adapter that you can connect to USB ISP GTA connector to link the SPI pins of programmer and the SPI pins of the microcontroller. You must consider the pins order of SPI based on the adapter pins order. I consider it this pins array of 2.54mm spacing as example, but you could go for a smaller array of 1.27mm spacing and then you need a smaller programming adapter. I got these adapters from JLC PCB for a very cheap price and you can download them related Gerber files from the link in the description of this video. Now that we've covered the basics of ISP, let's move on to some practical examples of ISP in action. I will use this PCB design from Alexandra Kovo to program a ATtiny13 using USB ASP programmer as hardware and Arduino IDE as software. I must add the microcore to my board's manager in order to bring the ATtiny13 microcontroller. So first I move it to preferences and added this URL. Then I go to Boards Manager and search for Microcore and install it. Here it will bring me the ATtiny13 to the Boards list. Now we move to the hardware. The design has ISP pins of 2.54mm spacing, so I will use my big adapter with the programmer GTA connector. The Pogo pins fits perfectly on the ISP exposed pins. And now I could plug my USB ISP to computer to burn the ATtiny13 bolt loader. I set the programmer as USB ISP slow and my target is ATtiny13. Then by clicking burn bolt loader, I get it transferred to the microcontroller. I will use the same code provided by Alexandra to demonstrate the programming concept. This code will alternatively glow some LEDs connected to the ATtiny13 I keep the same board settings as well as the adapter pogo pins connected to the board and simply by clicking upload, I get the sketch compiled and uploaded. To ensure successful ISP, there are some important tips and tricks to keep in mind. 
For example, it's crucial to ensure that the circuit is properly powered and that the programming voltage is correct. It's also important to follow the manufacturer's guideline for the specific microcontroller that you are working with. That's it for today guys, do not miss to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more electronics videos. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.